It's June 2019. Peggy and I are in Zimbabwe at the Sabi Valley Conservatory. We're getting ready to go out and do some conservation efforts on giraffe and rhinos. So the choppers ahead of us, they've actually got some giraffe visual. Really important that what we call the chase vehicle, which is this vehicle with the catches in the back, is all ready to go before the dart goes in. They've got a giraffe visual and in a couple of minutes we'll be ready to go. The giraffes are tranquilized and fitted with a GPS satellite unit. These are the first steps of the groundbreaking giraffe research being carried out by Giraffe Conservation Foundation right here in Zimbabwe. Unbelievable what happened. Well, we got her down. This is, uh, this is a big part of what we do across all of Africa. We've got a program called Twigger Tracker. We've got amazing partners all over the world. This is what we're trying to do to put 250, 300 units on giraffe across the continent to figure out where they're going, what they're doing. So we're putting GPS satellite tracking devices on them, we're giving them antibiotics, we're measuring them. It's actually a very emotional experience when you're out here. The real excitement comes when they give the antidote to the animal and it gets up and runs off. It's going to be interesting to see what data she shows us in the coming weeks and months and years and how we can use that data to hopefully expand the giraffe populations in parts of Africa where they really need help. Thanks very much, it was a great day. I mean, seven giraffe here one day is uh, a good effort. I mean, guys up in the air. Seven up, happy, and uh, seven more to go. Our men are out there now looking for rhino. We're gonna get up in the air and go and assist them. We wanna be able to notch them so that we can identify them. It makes the lives of the rangers a lot easier to be able to audit the rhino regularly. You know, these used to be very, very common animals across Africa. And with the poaching epidemic and pursuit of their horn, they've become rarer and rarer to the degree that there's just a few strongholds left. And those few strongholds have got to be properly managed. Absolutely. Look at this little guy. We then traveled to Mozambique, where Lewis and Peggy were going to engage in a collaring initiative for the apex predators that have been newly reintroduced into that ecosystem. We've just received the latest upload on uh, three particular lines, so we're going to head out there straight away and do some collar adjustments and um, just gather some bloods and some genetic data. 
Some of the collars failed, uh, which are our priority to change so we can keep tabs on them. And some of the collars, particularly on the big males, have got a bit tight. So it's essential we dart them and readjust the collars. We wanted to put young lions in here so they could spend their entire breeding lives in this ecosystem so we could get the maximum number of babies and generations out of these particular cats. These collars need to be loose enough that it's not a hindrance but tight enough that they don't slip over their head or they can't get a paw through. We've taken some blood, we've taken some hair samples and so it's pretty much ready to be woken up. Should be up within the next 10 minutes. These lions are well on their way to becoming a stronghold across Africa and when you see lion footprints in an area that hasn't had lions in it for many decades, you know you're doing something right. You know, they say that humans can push any species to the brink of extinction, but really it's the right humans that can bring them back. And Lewis and Peggy are examples of exactly the right humans. Partnering with people like Julian Fennessy, Sango, the Savi Valley Conservancy, Mark Haldane, and the many wildlife heroes on the front line that it takes to do real conservation. Yes, indeed, these are the right people.